This program is presented by Birch Gold Group, the precious metal IRA specialists. Good morning. In today's headlines, the U.S. House is in limbo until a speaker can be elected. But will Republicans unite to back McCarthy as speaker? A powerful storm slammed into the California coast Wednesday night, knocking over trees and killing one child. Now Californians are bracing for more storms this week. Texas lawmakers are moving to pass laws against transgender procedures on minors and sexualized content in schools. Find out more about the 20-plus LGBT-related bills they've filed so far this year. President Biden to visit the southern border for the first time. Meanwhile, officials are saying the U.S. plans to accept up to 30,000 migrants per month from Cuba, Nicaragua, Haiti and Venezuela. And a woman who overcame trauma says she's using it as fuel in her life. She now shows others that it's possible to overcome and find success. Good morning. Welcome to NTD. I'm Kevin Hogan. Good morning, and I'm Evelyn Lee. It's Thursday today, January 5th, and at this point in time, the U.S. House of Representatives is still at a stalemate. Operations have ground to a halt until a House Speaker is elected. Republican leader Kevin McCarthy has been unable to get enough votes to secure the role after six ballots. And today's Jeremy Sandberg has more on the standstill in Congress. Well, it's Groundhog Day. Again. After the fourth, fifth, and sixth round of votes, a House Speaker has yet to be elected. The House adjourned for the night with little to no progress. McCarthy actually lost one supporter, with Representative Victoria Sparts of Indiana voting present in the fourth and fifth rounds. It's the first time in 100 years that the House has failed to elect a Speaker on the first vote. Democrats are using the opportunity to criticize Republicans. Words like chaos, confusion, and disarray are being thrown around. The contrast between House Democrats on the chaos and confusion taking place on the other side of the aisle could not be more clear. President Biden called the situation embarrassing. To be able to have a Congress that can't function is just embarrassing. We're the greatest nation in the world. How can that be? Republicans, on the other hand, say nothing good comes easy. You know, democracy is messy, but I think that the opposite is unthinkable. The House can't kick off the new Congress or even swear in new members until a speaker is elected. They can't form committees, put forward legislation, or investigate the Biden administration until the matter is sorted out. Twenty Republicans stand in the way of McCarthy's bid. We're not going to take any more of Washington being broken. We're going to do something for the American people, and we're going to fix it. And is it going to be painful? And is it going to be difficult? Yeah, it probably is. That's why it took 100 years. McCarthy had just 201 votes when the night ended. He needs 218. Republican Representative Byron Donalds of Florida was nominated three times by his conservative colleagues as an alternative. Other choices put forth are Representatives Steve Scalise and Jim Jordan. Both say they back McCarthy. Kevin told me, he said, when the, the toughest times of life are when you get knocked down. The question is, can you come back? And I've always seen him be able to do that. Democrats continue to nominate Representative Hakeem Jeffries as their choice for Speaker. Jeffries is taking over as party leader. He won the most votes overall, 212. If McCarthy can win 213 votes and persuade the remaining naysayers to vote present, he would be able to lower the threshold required under the rules to have the majority. It's a strategy former House speakers used, including outgoing Democratic Speaker Nancy Pelosi, when she confronted opposition to win the gavel with fewer than 218 votes. Former President Trump on Wednesday urged Republicans to unite and back McCarthy. He wrote on Truth Social, Do not turn a great triumph into a giant and embarrassing defeat. Voting will resume Thursday. Jeremy Sandberg, NTD News. And there were some babies on Capitol Hill during voting yesterday. Congress dads Jimmy, Ca Jimmy Gomez and Joaquin Castro both had their little ones in tow. Gomez said he brought his family to Washington to watch him be sworn in for a fourth term. That ceremony is on hold until a House Speaker is chosen. Meanwhile, he's gotten a chance to swap parenting tips with Castro. Gomez's son, Hodge, is four months old. 
he, the, his, the proud father took to Twitter to post more than one picture. Gomez says he's been planning to take his son to the House floor since before he was born and that no matter what's going on between the parties, he's a constant reminder of what we're fighting for. One congressman joked, I wonder what age their kids will be by the time we have a Speaker of the House. The longest a House Speaker election dragged on for was two months. That was back in 1855. It took 133 ballots to come to a conclusion. And a powerful storm slammed into the California coast Wednesday night, knocking over trees and killing one child. Californians are now bracing for more storms this week. We're nervous, scared. Yeah, we're scared. We're, we're getting more sandbags and just buckling down the best we can. As the powerful winds roared into California, people fortified their homes in preparation for flooding and power outages. California's governor declared a state of emergency to allow for a quick response and to aid in cleanup from another powerful storm just days earlier. As the storm intensified, state officials warned residents in Northern California to stay off the roads. The National Weather Service warned people to stay away from beaches as monster waves of 20 feet or higher were forecast to hit parts of the California coast. Heavy downpours accompanied by winds with gusts of up to 60 miles per hour were expected through Thursday, making driving conditions difficult. Recent flash flooding in Georgia has damaged roads in the athens clark County area. A sinkhole opened up and swallowed a car on the road. Police say no one was injured after this white sedan fell into the fissure. Locals News reported the area received as much as four and a half inches of rain overnight Tuesday. Police say the driver safely got out of the car and it fell into the sinkhole later. At least two roads in the area were closed for major repairs. Texas lawmakers are taking a stand against transgender procedures on minors and sexualized content in schools. Here's more on their actions. For the upcoming 2023 Texas legislature, Texas lawmakers have filed more than 20 LGBT-related bills so far. Among them is Texas State Senator Bob Hall, who has introduced two bills targeting transgender procedures on children. Very similar to what we had last session. It will uh, basically prohibit doctors from performing transition surgery, non-medically necessary uh, mutilations of children. The state senator says the bills also aim to ban insurance companies from covering these treatments for minors. Parents or adult guardians who allow children to medically transition would be penalized. And so this is far more damaging than any smoking of a cigarette or a tattoo. Uh, would possibly be to a child. This is, this is life altering. He adds that transgender procedures are a huge moneymaker for hospitals and medical providers. Once they've done that surgery, that doctor will have created a patient for life. Activist Scott Nugent says youth transgender treatments generate massive profits for pharmaceutical companies. As a parent of three teenagers, Nugent founded the Transrational Educational Voices Organization to protect children from transgender medical treatment. When puberty blockers are prescribed to children, they are eight times more profitable. As a biological woman that medically transitioned to appear like a man, Nugent suffered dangerous complications from transition procedures that almost destroyed his life. He encourages the public to learn more information about his experience and activism on TreyVoices.org. We are talking about complications that absolutely change the trajectory of these children's life. As the 88th Texas legislature approaches, other lawmakers have also filed bills to ban classrooms from teaching gender identity and sexual orientation content before sixth grade and redefine drag shows as sexually oriented. NTD News, Texas. More than 500 illegal immigrants from Cuba have come ashore in the Florida Keys since the weekend. This as an increasing number of people are fleeing the communist country. About two dozen of them were being held Wednesday afternoon in a fenced-in area outside a U.S. Customs and Border Protection station in Marathon, Florida. Tents were erected to provide shade. The influx is stretching thin U.S. border agencies both on land and at sea. The trip from Cuba is quite dangerous. Thousands have most likely perished over the years. 
but an increasing number of Cubans are taking the risk. Over 4,000 have been stopped at sea since October. The Coast Guard tries to stop Cuban migrants at sea and return them to the island, but many make it to the shore. The U.S. Embassy in Cuba fully resumed visa and consular services Wednesday. The embassy abruptly suspended these services in 2017 after several of its staff were stricken with a still largely unexplained ailment dubbed Havana syndrome. The embassy confirmed this week it would begin processing immigrant visas. Permits to reunite Cubans with family in the U.S. will be prioritized. The resuming of services comes amid the greatest flight of immigrants from Cuba in decades. Some are pressuring the Biden administration to open more legal pathways to Cubans. At least 20,000 visas a year could be given out. Cubans are now the second largest nationality after Mexicans appearing on the border. The FBI called the so-called Havana syndrome a top priority in 2021. About 200 U.S. diplomats, officials and their family members overseas have suffered from its effects. A government-commissioned report says the illness is most likely the result of direct microwave radiation. President Biden said Wednesday he plans to give a border security speech Thursday and to visit the U.S.-Mexico border next week. The border visit will come during his trip to the North American Leader Summit in Mexico City. You can be visiting the border when you head down to, to Mexico. That's my intention. We're working out the details now. It will be his first border visit since Biden came into office. Biden did not reply when asked which city he planned to visit, although the news website Axios reported he would visit El Paso, Texas. The city declared a state of emergency in December amid high levels of illegal immigrant arrivals. And U.S. and Mexican officials said the U.S. plans to accept up to 30,000 migrants per month from Cuba, Nicaragua, Haiti and Venezuela. It's under a program that, that also expels people from those countries caught at the U.S.-Mexico border. The program would build on a policy launched in October that allowed thousands of Venezuelans to enter by air if they applied from abroad and could demonstrate they had a U.S. sponsor. Biden is scheduled to travel to Mexico City on January 9th and 10th for the North American Leader Summit. He will meet with Mexican President Andres Obrador and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Still to come, in Beijing, makeshift crematories are now being built as funeral homes and crematoriums in China are working round the clock to meet a surge in demand. And Amazon and the business software maker Salesforce are making huge staffing cuts with 18,000 to see pink slips from Amazon alone. Get the details when we return. It's just clear as day. The media, whether it's broadcast, cable, or print media, has become extremely biased. And I started looking online for alternative ways to to get information. And I saw an ad for a free trial. And I looked at it and I said, Epoch Times? I mean, come on, this is end of days type of stuff? I mean, what are they gonna be talking about here? And I said, well, it's a free trial, let me dig in. Is it giving me both sides? Is it giving me an objective point of view here? I have looked for opportunities to see where they might be biased, and I don't find it. It has given me a level of trust in media that I didn't think I'd ever get back. I love the Epic Times because it has renewed uh, my faith in the idea that a reliable, responsible, non-biased source of information is available. And I can say that I love it because of that. Welcome back. Beijing scrambling to launch a new campaign for funeral services, building makeshift crematories. It comes amid the growing COVID-19 outbreak in China. Funeral homes and crematoriums are working round the clock to meet the surge in demand. According to official data, there are 12 funeral parlors with a total of 90 furnaces in Beijing. A typical cremation takes 25 to 40 minutes. If all 90 furnaces operate around the clock across the city, over 3,000 cremations could be done daily. Yet funeral home staff say they are operating with several days of backlog. 
At the same time, on one of China's largest talent recruitment sites, incineration design engineers are in high demand, marked with more than a thousand new positions. It's unclear whether these incineration designs have been used to burn human corpses. And Chinese state media have called on citizens to rally around a so-called final victory over COVID-19. This is funeral homes across country are overflowing. A resident in Beijing is taking issue with the official death rate in China, citing his own experiences. Here's more. A growing line of mourners could be seen outside a Beijing morgue on Wednesday as China battles its COVID surge. It's not the picture some there would like the world to see. No filming, said this security staff. China's health authorities officially reported just five deaths on Tuesday. But some believe the toll to be much higher, including Zhang, a Beijing resident. Some people told me you know, the government relieved the number that was the single digit number of the deaths. That is totally ridiculous and uh, not credible, you know. As far as I know, my close relatives, among them, there are four died already. That is from one family. So, um, so I hope the government will honestly and credibly tell its people and people in the world what really happened here. State mouthpiece The People's Daily on Wednesday called on citizens to rally around a final victory over the virus. Fearful of new variants emerging, countries are slapping tougher controls on inbound Chinese travellers, which Beijing criticises as unreasonable and lacking scientific basis. But despite restrictions, state media reports interest in outbound travel is cranking up. At least 5 million Chinese are expected to arrive in Thailand this year, a third of its pre-pandemic annual total, while bookings for international flights from China have risen yearly by 145%. Though passenger travel is still a fraction of pre-COVID levels, the Chinese government says it will increase flights and make it easier for residents to travel abroad. Anti-government protests resumed on Wednesday across Peru after a brief pause during the past weeks. Authorities reported blockades of roads in 36 provinces, some of which ended in confrontations between police and demonstrators. Police dispersed one of these demonstrations in Arequipa after protesters blocked the street with fences taken from the local airport. In Lima, demonstrators tried to reach the Congress to demand that representatives step down. President Dina Boluarte said her transition government has already started a dialogue with all parties involved. Boluarte took over for Pedro Castillo of the Marxist Free Peru Party. This after he sought to dissolve Congress ahead of lawmakers' third attempt to impeach him. Peru is set to hold early elections in an attempt to defuse a national political crisis marked by deadly unrest after lawmakers ousted Castillo. E-commerce giant Amazon and business software maker Salesforce are the latest U.S. technology companies to announce major job cuts. The firms are trimming payrolls that rapidly expanded during the pandemic lockdown. Amazon said Wednesday that it will be cutting about 18,000 positions. Several teams will be affected, including the Human Resources Department and Amazon stores. The company is confronting a shift back to in-person shopping, as well as surging inflation that has sharply reduced consumer demand. Salesforce, meanwhile, said it's laying off about 8,000 employees, or 10 percent of its workforce. The cuts announced Wednesday are by far the largest in the 23-year history of the San Francisco company. Dell plans to stop using China-made chips by 2024. The computer maker has also told suppliers to reduce the amount of other made-in-China components in its products. The company has concerns over U.S.-Beijing tensions. It told suppliers late last year that it aims to meaningfully lower the amount of China-made chips it uses. That includes chips produced at facilities owned by non-Chinese chip makers. The move is the latest example of how the U.S.-China tech war is speeding up tech companies' efforts to move production away from China. And next up, a woman who overcame trauma says she is now using it as fuel in her life to show others what it's po- that it's possible to overcome and find success. That and more after the break.
This is Stephen K. Bannon. I urge you to protect your savings from inflation by diversifying into a physical gold IRA from Birch Gold Group. Simply text the word NTD to 989898 and you'll get a free info kit on gold IRAs explaining everything. Thank you. Thank you. I see the future is really bright for me. The high school diploma is just added to the confidence, and now I feel unstoppable. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Next, we have the story of a young woman who is now a successful business owner. Haley Slade is now the CEO and founder of a six-figure business called Slade Copy House. But her path taking her here was not easy. As a young teenager, Haley Slade was sexually assaulted by a leader of her church. And from then on, things spiraled. She says she was unable to function until she reached a turning point in her life. She tells me her story. I was ashamed of what happened to me. I felt like it was my fault. I felt worthless. Um, so eventually that bled into every aspect of my life. And I just felt like I had no purpose. I felt trashy, gross, like I was unlovable. So I got to the point of being suicidal. And it's, a, it's a, actually a really beautiful thing that uh, my best friend, she would always call me before she came over to my house and one the night that I decided to end my life, she didn't call me before she came over. I had no heads up. Um, I forgot to set the alarm in my house and um, I had the gun to my head and she ended up walking like in my bedroom and saw me and like took it from me. And I just think that that moment was God like saying like you're meant to be here. There's more for you. Like this is not the end for you. And that was the turning point for me. I got into therapy after that and like everything just started looking up from there. It sounds easy sometimes to just say it like that, but I un understanding that this is a very long time, like long time, pr long term process. How did you find the resilience to do that? Therapy was the biggest turning point for me because I uncovered just I knew it was affecting my life, but I uncovered just how deeply it affected my brain, how I process things, like how how it affected my actions. Um, they said I have PTSD, so I still suffer from moments of PTSD from the event. Um, so the turning point was getting into therapy and working through those issues and learning that I'm not invaluable. I'm extremely valuable, that that moment doesn't define me. And I thought that I was rising above and not letting it define me by staying silent because I was afraid of the stigma. I was afraid of what people would think. And then if people didn't know that about me, I could forget it and that it didn't happen. But I actually realized that I was allowing it to define me by not speaking out, by not getting the help I needed. There is a scripture that says we are overcome by the word of our testimony, by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And it clicked for me in that moment that by staying silent and not sharing this, I'm not overcoming. I'm still living in it daily. So by sharing it with my therapist, um, I felt in that moment that I was in the process of overcoming. And then as I shared more and more, and then eventually told some of my closest friends and family, I felt the freedom come more and more. You said before that you believe that every trial that you go through can be used to help someone else. Can you please go uh, in a little bit more detail about that? What do you mean? Yes, I believe that everything that we go through can help someone else. Like, I'm not the only person that's been through this. It's, I hate to say that, but there are hundreds of thousands of women that have experienced what I have and men as well. And when you're in the midst of these traumas, you feel like you're the only person. You feel like no one understands. And um, it's just simply not true. So 
I wanted to speak out about my own experience because I know that other people have experienced or are experienced or unfortunately are going to experience the same thing I did. And I'll, I want people to look at me and hear my trauma and story and see that you can rise above and you can find true joy and you don't have to be defined by what's happened to you. You are not what has happened to you. You are more than that, period. That's awesome. You know, I think sometimes life really comes to test you and people like you really are an example that I think you can actually gain so much more from that than you have to sacrifice. So thank you very, very much for sharing that. I think that was a imp very important message. Thanks, Thank Haley you Sane. so much. Thank you, Evelyn. That was really inspiring. Right. And, you know, I was also pretty interested in what, how it affected her faith. And did, she did tell me that she was able to separate the act of one of God's people from God himself. So that was wow. really interesting, too. Yeah. And to end the show with a lighthearted note, you may or may not enjoy traveling by bus, but you all are going to love this bus ride for the pups. Good morning, Bama. It definitely isn't a Greyhound bus, but there are hounds in it. Good morning, Jake. Nothing but dogs jumping into their assigned seats, attached to leashes rather than seat belts, picking up waiting passengers with wagging tails. Good morning, Amaru. Would you like a complimentary liver with your bus ride? Nobody said no. Jake. Dasher. Gumbo. This bus is better than an airline. Excuse you, you already had yours. The doggy bus Load up. is operated by Mo Mountain Mutts in tiny Skagway, Alaska. It's a husband and wife team offering dog training and dog walking. The licky puppy corner? They're practically necking in the back of the bus as they ride to outings. Yarrow notice are tangled. The bus offers the potential for entanglements, but when we watch them disembark, Okay, Amaru, Odie, go ahead. Oh sure, some of the passengers are rule breakers. Excuse me, ma'am, your tail is in the aisle. Ma'am, you're gonna have to adjust your butt. Thank you. But there's one seat that's off limits. <laughs> Who's honking the horn? Bama! Bama's ready to trade her dog license for a driver's license. Excuse me, ma'am, you're not driving. Get out of my seat. Oh, wow, just being able to see those cute pups all day, that must be a really stress-relieving job. Oh, for sure. If they have job openings, I'll sign up. Maybe <laughs> I'll take it even as a second job. I don't care. <laughs> okay. That's all for today's program. We'd love to hear from you. You can share your thoughts and your story at goodmorning at ntd.com. Write us if you'd like. Thanks for watching. I'm Evelyn Lee. And I'm Kevin Hogan. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Did you know YouTube only keeps selective videos on its platform? So if you want to make sure you get the full picture, just subscribe to our newsletter. Go to newsletter.ntd.com and sign up. It's free.